Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. This is a series of monthly webinars highlighting a solution that we know will enable our partners to work quicker and more efficiently. I am Jane Kacharzik with Panduit, and I will be facilitating this webinar. Just a little housekeeping before we begin. This webinar is being recorded. It will be available soon on demand, and registrants will receive an email when it becomes available. All lines will be muted during the webinar. Following the webinar, there will be a question and answer session. Please feel free to submit your questions utilizing the chat box on the GoToWebinar app. We'll answer as many questions as possible today in the time provided. Today's presenter is Michael Berg. He's the Senior Business Development Manager for Industrial Network Infrastructure for Panduit. In this position, Michael is responsible for channel business development and programs for the industrial manufacturing market. Michael has responsibilities for business development and program creation with automation distribution and control systems integrators. Michael has been with Panduit for 30 years and has experience ranging from research and development, product management, marketing and solutions marketing, and business development. He has expertise in industrial networking and infrastructure solutions, control panel solutions, and partnering programs. Michael is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Chicago with a BS in marketing. Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the call over to you. All righty, well, thank you, Jane. Um, this is Mike Berg, and uh, I'd like to say hello to you all uh, from my home office uh, to yours, uh, and welcome to our short form webinar here, which is on the industrial network infrastructure, your future business foundation. So how important is an industrial network to the business it supports? It's many fold across the organization. We tend to think of networks of how they affect us in the office workspace where a slowdown or a brief outage might make for talk around the water, for, around the water cooler. Uh, but in contrast with industrial networks, they control and communicate the status of our profit making assets. And uh, therefore, you know, it has impacts on our workforce productivity uh, significantly. And the outages and the slowdowns are extremely visible and they can be readily monetized. Um, and this can often have some career limiting consequences if, uh, if you're the designer involved. So a network outage can hamper even idle, a very productive workforce during an unplanned outage. Um, and this causes the business not, to not only lose production output, but can it, we can incur salary costs that don't result in profitable production. So while network health isn't always the sole focus of the business, if it was not causing problems, the big business could focus on more important tasks. So we're gonna to touch on now why it's important to have both a current plan and a future looking network plan. So we're gonna look at network cost distribution and we're gonna use this little triangle here and, and, and talk about how projects typically break down from the network perspective. So as we went out and studied pro project expenditures, uh, we, were examined, we examined the relationships between the network elements and where the dollars are invested. So software is usually the biggest piece and it's, it's a sizable one of about 60% of the project budget and it usually has a life cycle of two to five years. So soft, you know, software updates can drive the process improvements and that enhances profits. So the network hardware, the switches and devices that we're implementing out on the plant floor, they come in second and they have another big chunk of the, of the budget at about 23%. And these have a, a shorter lifespan than what we're used to on the plant floor. So they usually have a, a lifespan of about five years. So typically our industrial gear would be used much longer, but if it's something that's got Intel inside, it changes out a lot faster every three to five years. Uh, technology upgrades happen quicker on the network side. About 10% of the budget is with operations. So this is the field technology, tablets and things like this that is being used on the, on the plant floor uh, to support operations. And they also have this, this uh, five year maximum timeframe uh, with the technology as well. And then finally, we have the cabling in the infrastructure or what we call the network physical infrastructure. Um, it has the longest life cycle, which you're probably familiar with, 20 plus years, sometimes even longer than that. And it's about 7% of the, 
of the project uh, spend. So with cabling and infrastructure, it's often reviewed, uh, viewed as the relief valve used to control those initial investment costs. But in turn, it also determines how well new technology can be adopted over time. So it's kind of the platform that all these other things above here are relying on over time. So we may initially work well, but then over time, maybe we're, we're, we're not working as well from the infrastructure standpoint. And we can see from above that the switch hardware and the people technology will change out at least four times over the infrastructure lifespan. So we need to think about as we're, as we're talking um, with the users of the system, how tech driven is the company that we're working with? You know, knowing that answer can help us make better design choices. And we also need, we also need to recognize that a large percentage of the network problems, 50% or greater, are happening down in that cabling uh, and infrastructure layer. So we need to look at what's the cost of downtime? How much pain does it cause? And can we create a design that has greater reliability? So we're not saying to flip that triangle in terms of investment. We would love it if that happened, uh, but it probably won't. But we can say that we can use this life cycle of components to plan more uh, smartly. All right, so we also looked at best, uh, best in class networks. Um, and we thought to look at what are the types of things that the best in class manufacturers do in their networks when it comes to the physical layer? So what I'm showing you is from Aberdeen Research and they conduct a study in this regard. And what they did was they asked, they asked a lot of manufacturers questions about what they do with regard to their industrial network. Some of those are physically related. Those are the ones we're gonna talk about here. And then they also kind of segregated who answered in, based on their, their uh, performance level. So they segregated out the best in class, which will be the light blue color, and then also everybody else. Um, and I'll define what that best in class means here in a minute. So there's four key areas that they looked at uh, that relate to the physical layer uh, with differences. So reliability built into the network physical layer, big difference here between the best in class and all the others, 30% difference. Uh, so it really stands out. Uh, reliability, redundancy built into that. And then data link reliability, also a big difference there between what the best in class manufacturers are doing and what everyone else is doing. We looked at network management, a little bit smaller impact there, but still some differences between the two. And then we also looked at the cable management strategies and how well those are aligning to the industrial network architecture. And there's a pretty significant difference there between the best in class and everybody else in the study. So when we look at the best in class, how they defined it or how they segregated it out uh, is pretty pretty effective numbers here. So 99.91% uptime, which is eight hours aggregate downtime uh, per year. It was 11% reduction on average in the total cost of ownership. It was a 90% OEE, um, and typically world class is considered 80%. So these are this is some pretty good OEE, and then a positive 25% operating contribution margin. So 25% more profit going to the bottom line uh, with these companies. So this is significant, something that we should pay pay attention to uh, when we're designing uh, and and trying to build that reliability into the system and maybe even adopting some of those IT practices where it makes sense, uh, because all these things can be contributors to success out on the plant floor. So where we're gonna go next is talking about where do I start? So where we need to start is to really figure out what's out there, right? That's the natural course of where we're gonna take things, and that starts with network assessment and documentation. So we saw in that previous slide that many are conducting uh, network mon management, which is really good, or doing a little bit of monitoring. Uh, part of the problem that we that we encounter, though, is, is how we're documenting uh, that network. If we're documenting via prints, they're, they're usually good on the first day, and then after that, everything changes, right? Um, so it's a little facetious, but actually it's not all that far off. It's It's far easier to make a change in a pinch uh, physically, but it's far harder to get it documented. And, and updating CAD for a minor change is not typically viewed as a high value activity. It tends to wait. Um, 
our experience using uh, more network-based tools in monitoring network is that the typical plant floor scan turns up 20 undocumented devices operating on the network. The second thing to look at is really a mitigation plan for problems that may occur. This also relates back to that previous slide, right? The difference there between what the best in class was doing and what everybody else was doing in terms of reliability and redundancy planning comes into, comes into play here, right? If something goes wrong, what is our backup? How do we come back online as quickly as possible? Uh, Real-time information on the network is, is also very important here to avoid unforeseen effects that could happen in the network, things that we don't know are going to happen. Our next step is really looking at, are we engaging well with the organization? Uh, so the network maintenance, maintenance and operations strategy. Uh, are all the stake, stakeholders involved in this strategy? Uh, do they all play a part? And are we putting in some, some fence posts on where this network should be? What Are we defining it well uh, and, and how it could operate well and what are expectations around it? And then the final piece is kind of a forward or future looking plan. Uh, planning for when changes are going to be made. It's it's hard to do in a rip and replace strategy here. There's always going to be a migration strategy that's taken with these types of networks. So it's going to be in a lot of constant flux. We need to know what the overall strategy is and what the plan is for implementing it. Uh, sometimes these changes are driven also by the ability to support systems as well. As the workforce changes, um, you know, older generations, as, as they're retiring, they take a lot of knowledge with them, right? And then newer generations, they come along, they learned on different technology, and they want different types of things, different types of technology uh, to support uh, operations. So all things that need to be considered in our planning. The next thing we look at is really the state the state of the network, what's happening out on, on the plant floors. Um, and so this is kind of the, the most current data that we have uh, in terms of industrial ethernet. And so industrial networks continue to evolve over time. And so the industrial ethernet portion is continuing to grow. Uh, so in 2019, it was at 59% of the marketplace here with ethernet IP, IP Profinet, EtherCAT being your leading protocols here. Uh, it grew about 7% since the last time we saw this uh, chart. So it's, it's definitely growing in the space. At the same time, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a cooling effect happening on the, the field bus side. Uh, the projections uh, are of a shrinking of field bus to happen uh, over time. So about 5% about uh, reduction. So it's certainly an advantage here with, the, with Ethernet coming on board and being a, more of a part of the control systems that it, that it become, can become a dominant protocol and that can help us to create this connected system uh, across the industrial network and communicating back uh, to the enterprise itself. Okay, so we mentioned some, some things about network management tools. Uh, we definitely recommend utilizing the network management tools. Uh, the functionality of the of the network manage, management tools gives us the ability to document the current state of the network. They also enable us to monitor network readiness, uh, engage network performance, and find faults and misconfigurations in the system. And they do this all through a single plane of, pane of glass, or they are capable of doing that through a single pane of glass. Um, what's also important here with these network management tools is that they're valuable all throughout the life cycle of the network. From doing those initial health checks on the network and documenting the network uh, through an assessment, through the operation of the network and future planning of the network. So they can be valuable to tools all throughout. As we're looking at that overall uh, strategy plan, that we may be developing uh, with with the customer, uh, we also need we, we need to look at how well how are we going to match up the physical network and the logical network designs. So that's what we want to address here uh, with this slide. And there's three key elements we're we're going to call out here. So the reference architectures, like the like the one I'm showing you here, which is a basic one, 
Uh, they're heavily driven by the customer controls vendor choices and you as a designer, your preferences as well. Uh, but I also want to show you how the physical network can align really well to these logical models. So all the major control vendors, they have some type of reference architecture. Many are based from this basic Purdue model that we're showing you here uh, that are the colors uh, in the background here. Um, and they, they represent the logical reference architecture uh, in a basic form uh, across the plant floor. So there's also the physical network and how we're laying out the cabling and connectivity and connecting the switches that are being distributed out on the plant floor. The physical network is built aligned to the Telecommunications Industry Association TIA 1005-A. This is the premises standard for industrial. Uh, in this diagram, we've overlaid the Purdue model to the TIA 1005-A's distributor model here. This shows you how well these two systems uh, uh, align with, it, with one another, and that's by design. And then the third element here is being able to build uh, to these systems. So we need to be able to build a line to the architecture, right? We saw that in that, that graph, how that helps us be more effective, be more best in class. So, um, Utilizing systems that can be built with TIA 1005A in mind uh, can help uh, ensure that there's validation at each of these subsystem levels, level three, level two, level one, level zero, cabling subsystem three, cabling subsystem two, cabling subsystem one in TIA. Uh, we, we really count on the expertise of our design and deployment pop partners uh, so that we can adopt a format that provides reliability in the OT environment, you know, addressing the environmental conditions, but also adopts the best practice of IT systems. So these systems are testable. They're also um, more reliable, a little bit more redundant uh, as well. So um, from the from the logical and physical side, uh, you know, Pandua provides some some education in this area, but there's also other areas that you can look at. If you're newer to this industry or you just need to brush up on on networking. Uh, continuing education is always a good career booster. So uh, think of it as being better informed and better ready uh, as network requirements change or evolve within your organization or with your customer needs. Uh, some of the common paths that fit really well with what we're talking about here today, um, the CCENT, which is the entry level uh, entry network tech, the CCNA, industrial CCNA, and the IMINs are all really aligned really well. And then the Cisco certified internet, uh, internet work expert. So all things to consider. All right, so we talked about being forward looking as well. So here's some of the future planning considerations, things to monitor with industrial ethernet. So, um, so these are some of the technologies that, that Panduit monitors uh, with, with regard to Ethernet, but the, the industry also as a whole is, in, is engaged from the control side, uh, IT side as well. So power over Ethernet, um, it's very, we're talking about current technologies, things that are used in a lot of the buildings. You're probably seeing it used for, for secu security cameras, monitoring cameras today in the building space, but it also at some point here is, may, may have more of an impact uh, in the controls design or or, or even in, in more closer to the machine level as well. So this is something to monitor. Uh, they possibly could replace some of the DC devices that are out there today. Um, as things evolve, uh, this single pair ethernet that's on the right, also power over ethernet is capable on this single pair ethernet. And we'll get to that in a moment. So time sensitive networking. We talked about how ethernet is expanding uh, across the plant floor. Time sensitive networking is a very important thing to enable ethernet to be delivered in the more time critical applications where synchronization is involved, where we can be, have a more resilient network, more deterministic network. So uh, this is present in a lot of different spaces. So industrial control, automotive, and things like uh, audio video over ethernet uh, as well. So three different areas driving that technology. Software-defined networking, this is kind of as we build up the ability with the infrastructure for it to be consistent, resilient, reliable uh, capabilities with software-defined networking with a predictable infrastructure 
much more capable. Then the final one here, single pair ethernet. Um, this is something you may have heard, heard something about. It's very prevalent in the automotive space, the uh, building automation space and, and uh, fire alarm safety security, and also with industrial automation. The connectors are gonna be a little bit different, a little more hardened on the industrial side. Um, the driver here is, is really bringing the node cost down for the edge devices and being able to connect those edge devices so that we have visibility on the network to every device uh, that's out there. Um, so uh, what this system will also do, it's not gonna have the same bandwidth as a CAT 6A or CAT 5E at this length, but it allows connectivity for that edge device up to a thousand meters. So that's a really big benefit on the industrial side. Um, so this technology is just starting to emerge. Connectors are you know, being designed, developed, standardized. Uh, devices are, are soon to, to come online as well in this regard, but it's kind of an emerging technology, something that you should be monitoring as it happens. All right, so um, I, I talked about a lot of different things here in the last few slides. What I wanted to point out here as I move towards closing is that all of our companies here, we're, we're, we're playing maybe different roles, but we're, we're very, in, in each area, we're critical in delivering these projects, right? We might be involved in that M&O strategy and in talking to that end customer day in and day out and really understanding who they are as a company. Um, we might be really good at delivering structured cabling, right? And, and, and being able to test and validate systems um, or we might be more so at that controls level and designing systems and the industrial automation piece and at the machinery level. But all of those things are needed uh, together to deliver this type of solution. And really the, the value that we're providing together is that any of us can, can make a promise uh, to, to our customer base and we know and we can rely on how the partners are gonna deliver. So uh, in closing, I wanna say that Panduit's engaged with leading companies in controls design, structured cabling design and deployment, and leading distributor partners that provide key services, consultation, and project management. It's a common vision amongst these leading companies that makes possible the complex planning required and the coordination between partners is a key factor that enables the greater reliability in network designs and deployments. If you liked what I presented here today, um, there's some things that, that really support this material. So I just kind of briefly went through this, but there is actually a white paper that talks in, in, in greater detail on all these topics. That's that middle one that says industrial network infrastructure. Uh, we'll, provide the, we'll provide this to you. And there's also case studies and even detailed, what we call popular configuration drawings available that you can use uh, in these discussions as well. So. With that, I am going to turn things back over to Jane. Thanks, Mike. We will, we will use this time to answer questions, so please feel free to um, put your questions in the chat window in the GoToWebinar app. Um, Mike, I did have a couple questions come in while you were talking. Uh, the first one is, I noticed on the graph where you showed the best-in-class percentages that network management did not have as large a, a difference. Can you comment why that might be the case? Sure, and let me see if I can go back to that slide. I think I made it there. Okay, so uh, what we're talking about is this third item, and there is a smaller difference between the best in class and everybody else in the study that was conducted. So I, I'm kind of speculating here on my own, but a couple of reasons why I think that might be the case is that you know network management is it's it's a documentation it's a way to document the network but it's also a necessary item for security and patch updates and and things along these lines right so there's multiple drivers for why these things are needed um, and it's also tends to be a, like a lower cost investment it's more of a software investment um, and and it's a way that people can better understand what's happening on their network um, so this is actually a good sign that more more companies are taking advantage and taking a good step towards improving the network. Okay. Um, looks like we have one more here, Mike. Uh, looking at where to start in the reference architecture, what are the triggers to start a project or this development work? 
Okay, let me see if I can go to this one here. Okay, so this is close to, to where that question would be asked. Um, and, and what I can say is that there's many different uh, drivers that can relate to where the physical network is going to come up. So there's going to be new production lines. There's going to be, you know, major pieces of control equipment that might, you know, go obsolete at some point, or they need a migration plan. Um, when those things happen, they're often at some point linked to a network upgrade. So when I'm going to the new piece of technology, I find out suddenly now I need uh, a more updated network in order to be able to use it effectively. Um, so that on, on some level that initiates the physical network, but the real reasons where the deep dive happens and we start looking at the uh, M&O strategy really relates to a couple areas in my experience. Um, the first one is uh, the loss of production with downtime and, and maybe even like continuing support issues with the network uh, where it can be monetized. Um, and then the second one is really around major corporate initiatives, things that might be data driven, monitoring processes in real time where we need that connectivity all the way to the edge or really technology driven as well. It, it could be people technology, but it could also be like an increase in the amount of automation, um, which is possible. We're going to see a lot more of that with what's going on in the world uh, these days. Um, we're seeing this increase in automation in markets like e-commerce, where there's a lot more robotics, uh, collaborative robots working with people, AGVs out on the plant floor. These types of initi initiatives prompt a need to go through and review that network strategy. Okay. Um, it looks like I don't have any more questions at this point. We'll give it another moment for any other questions to come in. Please make sure to just type that question in the chat box. Okay, Mike, it looks like I don't see anything coming in here. Um, we want to thank you for your time today, and we will go ahead and conclude the webinar. We'll go ahead and conclude the webinar.